Are you interested in taking that big step to enter into competitive magic, or do you enjoy just watching and following along as the very best players of the very best game in the world compete with one another to become champions? Either way, the path to that championship is a long one, and it's recently been overhauled and redesigned. This video will guide you through these exciting and drastic changes, covering everything from the Players Tour to the Mythic Invitational, the Magic Pro League, the brand new Rivals League, and so much more. How to get there and where do they lead? And in a video going over some of the most skilled play for this most skillful of games, it is only fitting that it is brought to you in part today by Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is giving away a free two-month unlimited access trial to my subscribers who click the link in the description box. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. Premium memberships give you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. Since I'm a YouTuber, I'm obviously a big fan of classes like Cinematography Basics, Understanding Filmmaking Style by Zach Mulligan. Hey, Mulligan, what an appropriate name for this video. And it's a video that has directly benefited from the great lessons and skills that Zach shared. So check out my special link and join Skillshare, the online learning community for creators with more than 25 thousand classes in design, business, and more. Skillshare. Organized play was recently overhauled in no small part to the large role Magic Arena will be playing in Magic's future as an e-sport. As such, there are now two main tracks to becoming a Magic the Gathering champion, a digital track and a paper track, and a host of overhauls and major changes. This video will cover both tracks as well as all of these amazing changes. But regardless of track, all tournaments now are meant to feed into other tournaments with one final destination, World Championships. Let's start by talking about how you can get to this highest level of play in paper. Wizards of the Coast is currently offering a diversity of ways to progress up the ladder of competitive play and ultimately to try to qualify for the World Championship. Let's start at the very top. The first and biggest major event to look at is the Players Tour Finals. There are to be three of these events in a year, with high placement in these events securing a spot in the Season Ends World Championship. These events are expected to include roughly 120 people and have a higher level of prestige than the Mythic Championships or Pro Tours of today. Outside of being a member of the MPL, there are going to be a few ways to qualify for the Players Tour Finals. Do well at the previous Players Tour Finals. Wizards of the Coast hasn't released the specifics of how these tournaments are going to operate yet, but they have outlined that doing well at the Players Tour Finals can earn a qualification to the next Players Tour Finals. Win a Grand Prix. All Grand Prix winners automatically earn a qualification for a specific Players Tour Final. Be a top finisher at a Players Tour event. More on this in a bit. These events are going to pay out $250,000 to the 120-ish players in the event, and the winner will earn themselves a seat at the 2021 World Championship. Wizards hasn't announced all of the details of how to qualify for the 2021 Worlds, but we do know that this is a guaranteed way to get in. A large chunk of invites to the Players Tour Finals events will come from the regional Players Tour events around the world. Functionally, these events are going to be similar to the Pro Tour and Mythic Championships that we're used to. The key difference is that there will be one in each major region where competitive magic is popular. In practice, these events are somewhere between the regional Pro Tour qualifiers from the last couple of years and Pro Tours as we remember them. With an event in each region for each of the three Players Tour final events, there will be a total of nine Players Tour events in a yearly season. Wizards expects about 
3,600 total invites to go out in a season to these events, roughly double the number of Mythic Championship invites this year. The payouts for each event vary by region based on expected attendance. Players Tour Americas are expected to have 500 players with a $250,000 prize pool. Players Tour Europe are expected to have 400 players with a $200,000 prize pool. Players Tour Asia Pacific are expected to have 250 players with a $150,000 prize pool. There isn't currently very much concrete information on the exact formatting of regional players tour events, but they are speculated to be functionally similar to a tabletop mythic championship. What's worthy of note is that even if a player qualifies for a regional players tour, they are only allowed to play in one regional players tour per players tour final. This means that if somebody were to qualify in the United States, they could fly to the regional players tour event in Europe if they wanted, but they couldn't also play in the regional players tour event in America if they did. As the difference in size would imply, qualifying for a regional players tour event is an easier task than qualifying for a players tour final. Here are all the ways to qualify. Any player who finishes in the top eight or with 39 match points at individual Grand Prix, the top four teams and all other teams with at least 36 match points at a Grand Prix, last chance qualifiers held the day before the event, all members of the MPL, all Magic Rivals League players, more on this later. All players from the previous Players Tour final are automatically qualified for the next Regional Players Tour as well. Top finishers from the previous Regional Players Tour can earn qualifications to the next Regional Players Tour, similar to the Players Tour final placement thresholds. Players Tour qualifiers, or PTQs as we're used to calling them. Magic Online qualifiers, similar to the tabletop PTQs that we're used to. The qualifiers on Magic Online aren't going anywhere. Hall of Fame status, discretionary invitations, premier series events. Wizards of the Coast is going to move towards partnering with a number of prominent tournament series like Star City Games and Bizarre D Bagda's events in order to add a level of prestige to these events. WPN qualifiers. Some local game stores will be able to host certain kinds of events that will award players tour invitations. More information on this will come as stores begin announcing how these events will work. All of these are the ways that you can start your journey to the World Championship through tabletop play, but what about digital? Let's talk Magic Arena and the Arena Track. The MTG Arena Track is actually close to what we've seen this year. Glitzy, invitational-styled events that are meant to showcase the best the game has to offer, fan favorites, and more, all competing for $750,000 in prize purses. With three over the course of the year, Wizards of the Coast is effectively announcing that they plan to take the client's competitive viability very seriously. Winners of these events are going to qualify for the 2021 World Championship. So how can a player qualify? By playing in a Mythic Qualifier. A Mythic Qualifier is a two-day event on Magic the Gathering Arena. The top 16 players in the event all earn invitations to the Mythic Invitational that the Qualifier feeds. There are two of these per Mythic Invitational, meaning that there are 32 total invites per Mythic Invitational being given out via Arena tournaments. The first step to playing in a Mythic Qualifier is reaching Mythic Ranking on MTG Arena. From here, finishing a month in the top 1,200 players in either Limited or Constructed is the way to become eligible to compete in a Mythic Qualifier. Finishing in the top 1,200 Mythic players in Limited or Constructed is also going to earn player qualifications into Mythic Point Challenges. These events are going to be structured similarly, but won't award qualifications to another tournament. So what's the relevance? It's all about the upcoming MPL structure and the Rivals League. At the beginning of 2020, the Magic Pro League will be shrinking by 25% down to 24 players. In order to make this new MPL, the following steps will take place. 2019's top 20 MPL players based on Mythic Points will stay in the MPL. 
2019's bottom 12 MPL players will no longer be a part of the MPL. But all hope isn't lost for the people who are no longer a part of the MPL. Starting in 2020, there will also be a group of Magic players called the Rivals League. These players are going to occupy an area similar to the MPL, but won't have all the prestige, not all the qualifications and appearance fees that the MPL members enjoy. Eventually, the Rivals League is going to include a total of 46 players. For its inaugural season, it's going to have 32. The reason for this is that in order to get Magic on an August to August season track, the first seven months of 2020 are going to be a partial season, starting on January 1st and ending on July 31st. For this partial season, Magic is going to have a smaller 32-person Rivals League, comprised of 2019's bottom 12 MPL players, 2019's top eight ranked players from digital and tabletop play. These are going to be the non-MPL players with the highest number of mythic points earned in the appropriate types of events in 2019. Four discretionary invites chosen by Wizards of the Coast. Going forward, tabletop events will award what are called player points, and arena events will award mythic points. This point system gives everyone a concrete way to track the progress of players throughout the season. At the end of this partial season, there will be an MPL gauntlet, a 16-player event in which the top four players will all make it into the MPL for the 2020 to 2021 season. To break down how the MPL shift works, all of these things will happen. Of the 24 MPL members, the top 16 will remain for the 2020 to 2021 season. We'll touch on how rankings are calculated later. The bottom four of the MPL are automatically knocked down to the Rivals League for 2020 to 2021. With the free four slots, the two Rivals League members with the highest Mythic points and the two Rivals League members with the highest player points will automatically be added to the MPL. MPL players number 17 through 20 are entered into the MPL gauntlet for a chance to hold their spot. The other 12 players in the MPL gauntlet will consist of Rivals players ranked 3rd through 8th on Arena and Tabletop play. At the conclusion of the MPL Gauntlet event, the top four finishers will be added to the 2020 through 2021 MPL. The bottom 12 will become rivals. At the end of the MPL Gauntlet event, all point totals will be reset to begin the next season. For the complete 2020 through 2021 season, the Rivals League will consist of the bottom four of last season's MPL, the bottom 12 of the MPL Gauntlet, the top 12 ranked digital players via Mythic Points, the top 12 ranked tabletop players via Player Points, six discretionary invites chosen by Wizards of the Coast. Players in the Rivals League will receive invites to regional player tour events, as well as invites to their own Rivals Mythic Qualifier, a unique path to the Mythic Invitational. On top of these invites, Rivals will also receive an appearance fee for playing in premier events, up to $20,000 in appearance fees per player per full season. So recapping a bit on what this means for the MPL, the 2020 through 2021 MPL will consist of the top 16 ranked MPL players for the previous partial season, the top four players of the MPL gauntlet, the two rivals with the highest mythic points from the 2020 partial season, the two rivals with the highest player points from the 2020 partial season. For players outside of the MPL, point totals aren't going to intersect, and there will be completely different paths for tabletop and arena play. For players in the MPL, this isn't the case. For the 2020 through 2021 season, MPL players' rankings will be determined by a combination of mythic points, player points, and points earned from MPL split play. This is so every bit of top-level play opportunities that these players participate in are tracked and measured against one another. So there's a lot going on here, and to summarize all of it in some easier to digest points, 
The World Championship is still the flagship event of Magic the Gathering. It's fed by Players Tour Finals and Mythic Invitationals. There are going to be three Players Tour Final events a year, each fed by three regional Players Tour events. These are effectively the new Pro Tours. As such, they're going to have a myriad of ways to qualify for the regional Players Tour events, including Grand Prix, PTQs, and events on Magic Online. There will be three Mythic Invitationals a year, each fed by two Mythic Qualifiers. These are similar to the Mythic Invitational this year and Mythic Championship 3. The MPL will be shrinking to 24 total players. The Rivals League is going to consist of players that were formerly in the MPL, the top performing players in digital and tabletop magic, and a handful of discretionary invitees. The most important thing to note here is that magic isn't dying. Wizards of the Coast is actively investing in the future of organized play, both on a digital and a tabletop front, and it is making efforts to globalize its tournaments. As time goes on, we'll have more information about how effective each of these tournament series and leagues are, but with something concrete to look towards, it's hard not to be optimistic about the future of competitive play. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by posting a comment. And remember that all organized play starts with just a deck and a friend, and you might want to take that deck and that friend down to your local game store for Friday Night Magic, the Standard Showdown, or any other in-store events. When you spend money, when it is possible, when it is reasonable, why not spend it where you're spending time playing this great game? That's at your local game store. You're supporting your magic community. Special thanks to the professional consultant for this video, the venerable Emma Handy. Be sure to check out links to Emma's work in the video description. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.